morning, everyone. Welcome to Ghana Q&A. Uh, we're into May of 2024, and we've had some exciting news uh, just recently, last night, in fact. The Ethereum ETFs have been approved. So that's another uh, huge boost for DeFi as a legitimate um, financial tool for the modern era, um, which is great to, great to have um, confirmed. Um, we are looking at um, various different bits and bobs around the space today, uh, mostly Cardano, but a little bit into other things as well. Morning, Dinesh. Morning, good morning. Um, so before I launch into my spiel of bits I want to look at, has anybody got any particular questions, workshop items you want to help done, get help done? Or shall I just roll? Hi, right, Jonathan, how are you? Hey, Paul, all right. Uh, okay, Maybe so you one. want one out of left... Good day, Anish. You want one out of right, left field, I've got one for you. Um... Just thinking outside of the box, obviously, most of the people that potentially listen to um, your presentation have some concept of a Cardano ecosystem. Um, speaking to a friend of mine who's heavily into um, Solano, um, obviously, he doesn't know too much about Cardano in itself. So I thought I'd actually spin it even more on its head. Um, I've got another friend that's just literally bought um, or opened up a MetaMask wallet um showed some interest in um um singularity agix and was wondering if with their uh, metamask wallet they could actually buy crypto tokens oh, sorry cardano tokens as in singularity good question so there are some nuances to that question <laughs> uh metamask is a ethereum um wallet effectively so it works with erc20 tokens on, that, on those blockchains um that support that format so it doesn't support native cardano tokens however uh agix is a uh a coin that was launched on ethereum and then migrated over to cardano a couple of years ago so you actually do have supply of agix both on ERC20 and on Cardano. So uh, in by principle, you could certainly buy some um buy and hold some AGIX in his MetaMask wallet. The question would be where he gets hold of Ethereum AGIX now, because all the activity is really on, on the Cardano blockchain now. Um and actually, I don't know the answer to that question offhand. We could do a quick. We could do a quick search. Um, so maybe, maybe question would be: Do they still do they still trade on the Ethereum version of AGIX? Or it was called uh, by a different name. That um, it was AGIX on on Ethereum as well. Was it? Yeah, okay. and they they bridged certainly a lot over um but i think it looks like they're still operating on ethereum too so uh you can certainly buy we have a look at the coin market cap listing you can certainly buy it from the centralized exchanges uh on the rc on the ethereum chain uh where's the list of dexes or sexes that they are itself from i don't use coin market cap anymore uh, oh, it's that, yeah, Dexes. So, yeah, it's on. Uh, actually, no, that's wrap teeth on Uniswap. So, yeah, they're on the only native raw AGIX. Um, it's not a synthetic that's not been sort of mimicked, price actions being. Um, copied is on um, you can only get those from Cardano decentralized exchanges if he's looking just to buy on a centralized exchange and then send it over to his MetaMask which is perfectly possible with um, Ethereum blockchain then he can go and buy his AJX on 
uh, Binance or um, any of these large exchanges. Uh, Mexi's one I'm I've been I've been interested and in, tried out for the first time recently because that's um, actually now starting to hold Cardano native tokens. Um, so you and Maker and and a few others are on and now on Mexi as well. That's interesting. Uh, but yeah, so uh, he could buy on Binance and then send it over to his MetaMask um, because any so long as in his withdraw options from Binance, he chooses the Ethereum blockchain as the destination. If he chooses Cardano and sends it to an Ethereum address, then it will disappear. And vice versa, if he chooses to send it to a Ethereum style blockchain, but to a Cardano address, then it'll disappear. So he has to be he has to be careful. That's the nuance. You have to make sure you're operating on the right coin on the right chain um, and choosing if you're operating with a centralized exchange, choosing which exchange, which chain you're sending to, if you are sending to a, a self-sovereign wallet, you have to be careful that you are making sure that you are sending the correct coin to the right chain because um, in the self-sovereign world, you are responsible for your assets, you're responsible for your infrastructure, and um, you have to be a bit, um, a bit more careful in that you understand what's being sent where. So centralized exchanges typically just sending one to another, they'll just hide that sort of um, underlying architecture from you because they don't really care too much. Um, and most centralized exchanges support multiple um, blockchains. Uh, but yeah, particularly for sending out to MetaMask or to Eternal Wallet or Yoroi or something, and make sure you're choosing the correct chains accordingly. Is that helpful? Yeah, that's great. I'll, what I'll do is I'll uh, get him to come and watch your presentation, which is another big plus. Nice. If you get him to like and subscribe at the same time, that'd be great. Hundred <laughs> <100%. laughs> percent. Uh, good. Any other questions? Dash, were you popping up with one, or was that just a that for, you pull the floor? Yeah, I've just, I've just got this uh, thing on my mind. When I first uh, bumped into um, uh, cryptos uh, on. Finance. I I was buying some coin, um, and I had to use Bitcoin to buy it. So it, it was uh, naturally the feeling was that I was reluctant to use Bitcoin to buy something else. That was like the first sort of thought process. Then these stable coins came in um, into into being. Now on Cardano, there's a debate. There's lots of debates about we don't have any. Any, any um, stable coins other than USDM, etc., and you have to you have to buy uh, ADA to buy anything else. So, is is do you see that as a restriction, or would you say having a, a stable coin on Cardano would be a, a, a better option? Yeah, interesting, interesting question. I think. Um, I think it's quite useful to have a entrance and exit through your sort of primary token, primary coin for a chain. Um, Cause that's, a, that's, it's almost like the, you know, Ethereum blockchain, you use Ethereum as your gas to, um, and on Cardano you use ADA as the, as the fee um, token. Um, although that can change on, if on Cardano, we could end up with um, a technological, we will end up with a technology called Babel fees, which will allow you to pay your fees in a alternative native token um, rather than with ADA. Um, but ultimately, uh, the ADA is the world, the Ethereum's, they are the fuel, they are the liquid, the, the oil of the blockchains themselves. And so having a large um, transaction volume through those tokens is important for the health of the network uh, because that's where actually paying for the network, that's where the, the money is made, gener generated. Um, so uh, with a with a stable coin on Cardano, for example, uh, the blockchain is still benefiting in terms of transaction fees um, at the moment because that's being paid in ADA. But if that was to be you know, migrated over to another token, then we've got a different set of 
economics and and how how the chain gets paid for becomes um something that he's thinking about looking into more deeply um certainly again uh if you are a a trader then having a stable coin um uh, that's pegged to us dollar or maybe it's your local currencies uh euro or pound or something then you you certainly would appreciate having a stable coin in your in your local currency because that's ultimately where you're translating back out to to spend it or um or whatnot uh, as far as taking your precious bitcoin and selling some to buy uh meme coins uh that doesn't feel very comfortable <laughs> which is which is purely a psychological thing isn't it because uh really all these assets all they are doing is a, is storing a value that we can then translate into something for the for utility in the world um and until you know we're we're actually got uh checkouts accepting these tokens we're not going to have an easy off-ramp for for any of them so they are going to have to translate from one token to another at some point and um i think stable coins are great but ultimately uh long term it would be great if they if they didn't have to exist because my ideal picture is just being able to uh, go to the uh, corner shop and buy my Snickers bar with Ada. Uh, that would you know, just be the friction-free uh, choice that I want to make. So when I turn up at the checkout, I, I can shoot that. All retailers accept multiple tokens, um, digital tokens, just like um, uh, they may accept multiple loyalty cards or, or um, points. So that's that's where that's where we're sort of headed. We've we've, we've got a taste of it with um, plastic. If you're paying with credit card, your underlying asset doesn't really matter. You're just um, the retailer knows that there's the underlying settlement layer will be in their local currency, and the Stripe and um, the big networks that um, not Stripe uh, the the credit card settlement layers. Visa, Mastercard, they handle that uh, exchange, um, and they charge for that uh, that benefit as well. But yeah, to be able to just choose, okay, I'm going to pay for my uh, milk in. Perhaps milk's not the best use because it's a token on Cardano as well. But if I'm going to pay for my uh, my Walker's crisps with uh, with Ada or Bitcoin, that could be my choice. Um, just as a as a as a holder. And so that's where I want it. That's where I want things to get to. And I think so. That's where we will get to. Um, I don't. Were you in Lucas' call, uh, Dinesh? Yes, I was. Yeah, yeah. So he, he pointed out the uh, the Algorand promo video, which is yes, that, I, I was thinking like that as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That that's more competitor type of advert as well. But but um, uh, a psychological viewpoint. You're you're right. You know, to to use another coin to pay for. To, to pay to buy another coin it, it just seemed psychologically there's a resistance there whereas with uh, in 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 binance case what happened was they said if you buy bnb tokens and if you trade on binance you pay the fee um using bnbs and everything else you can trade using us um, busd so it was like you know it, that model stuck with me for a long time so yeah. coming on coming on to Cardano and then, and it didn't have a, a localized stable coin. It, it, that's where I was I was, I was struggling a lot. Your mind said it has to shift. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I I did really like having um, BUSD on Binance as well. Um, and in fact, so I was in my case I was paying uh, employees contractors in. Uh, BUSD because that's the reserve currency in the world and we're, yeah. we're not going to get a, a hugely volatile price movement and if, I, if I'm paying him one day and he picks it up the next day translates it back to their local currencies you know it's not not an issue so yeah it is a a definite benefit um, to have something pegged to the reserve currency of the world which is you know by default the most stable um, even though it doesn't feel like it in these days. <laughs> Dollar seems to shift up and down as much as no. 
uh, crypto. And I think it does it does affect the um, the flow and the um, economy, general economy of the uh, the underlying chain. That that's just my personal perspective. Psychological, it's just psychological. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, and it, it will shift over time. Paul, you got your hand. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Yeah, Jonathan, hopefully I'm not going to steal your thunder. Um, I've got just two things. I saw that Lace version 1.11 has now been released. Um, and the other one was um, in Drip Drops, there's a um, voting app or something called Summon Platform. I just wondered if you'd had a chance to look at that. Uh, summon? Is that what you called it? Yeah, it's it's in um, the drip drops platform. It's uh, there's a a link about voting about voting, and then it's called the summon platform. Once you click on that link in um, drip drops, yeah. So, um, well, let's start with uh, lace wallet. I haven't actually been keeping up with lace um, too heavily, but great to see that they're still uh, progressing with their roadmap. Um, I don't know what features are in the latest release, but certainly what they've been working up towards is bringing in the uh, governance um, updates to the blockchain itself. Um, so all the work at the moment is going towards, all the work on Cardano um, primary is going towards uh, releasing governance features. So that is creating uh, decision-making tools for the community to use. Um, as this year or early next, probably we'll have um, the Chang hard fork. And after that point, these tools will all go live on, on the main blockchain. And then we can actually start to look at handing over the uh, the Genesis keys of Cardano from the three founding entities, Cardano, uh, Cardano Foundation, IOG, Emergo, handing their keys that control the parameters on the blockchain over to the community. Um, so that's you and me and um, whatever group we're associated with that has uh, voting rights. And so that's uh, that's a lot of the roadmap of LACE in particular. They're, they're looking to support the, the governance tooling that's all going live. So if you want to uh, interact with um, the testnet versions of the blockchain to play with the Cardano um, parameters, um, the governance tools, etc., then you need to use the a special version of the Lace Wallet. So if you want to interact with, I think it's, um, I think I've actually spoken about it before, Sancho, Sancho Net. Uh, Tooling's down at the moment, it's a work in progress. Uh, that is where you can have your, you can download your special ver version of Lace Wallet and then start interacting with those governance tools in a testnet environment. So you can play with the latest version, the latest public release um, may have those features disabled, so you won't actually be able to connect with that onto the blockchain. But I'm wondering if they actually have switched them on so that you can actually play with the production release lace wallet on the Sancho Net, which would be a cool thing. And I'd, I'd like to play with that myself. So thanks for pointing that out. Um, but yeah, uh, I, they don't have a uh, release notes or anything too obvious. On the side. Yeah, look, look like there's a comment right at the top. Check out what's new on Lace 1.11. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> Pink bar. To show you what blind spots we develop. I now ignore anything in the in the headroom footer that's trying to get my attention because I know they're trying to get my attention. Uh, so moving towards a DAP store by the looks of things. Um, Trezor integration, that's nice. Adding in the, adding another hardware wallet to their suite of supported ones. They already support the Trezor. They're just adding the support for the T, that looks things. Um, and I did hear that release actually. So um, within the Cardano native wallets, you can actually choose which um, Cardano node you are using to um, send your transactions through. So by default, most of the wallets have a set of nodes that they use and support, um, but you can change that to your preferred node. So Fluid Pool actually runs a uh, Cardano node. Um, 
that you can, if you're a delegate to the pool, you can use that in your wallet to um, send your transactions through a fluid node. Um, and uh, yeah, I haven't actually used that myself for a while, so I need to resurrect that and <laughs> maintain it. But uh, we're moving to new hardware um, at the moment, so uh, that will likely get set up again and I can start to push that a bit more. Yeah, the, yeah, that's a good feature in the, in the Lace Wallet. Well done to the team. And the other point was Drip Drops are using the Summon platform for their governance. At, was it the governance tool in there listed on there? It, it was showing the Summon app for? Did you say Paul? Sorry. Voting, wasn't it? You just click on, you go back to the other screen, just click on the, the, the link on the right-hand side. It just says vote now. Right today, this one at the top. And yeah, now she's using Summon. So Summon is a platform for DAOs, decentralized, decentralized autonomous organizations. And we actually uh, do I have a, I think I certainly played with it. I don't know which network I did it on to be a hundred percent. Uh So I think it was on state data. Let's check. So they've forgotten me or you know, a while ago, so it's not remembered. Yeah, the, the, the summon platform is for, is a set of DAO tools. Um, and they're, it's spawned from the same people that built the multi-signature wallet that we use for uh, Opportunity DAO. So the um, the team there was from ADAO, uh, and some of the guys in ADAO moved on to create a commercial, more of a commercial focused um, group called Summon. And so their first major release platform release is Summon platform um, to give DAOs tools to manage their decision making. Um, so Drip Drops are using the Summon platform to control the the operation of the DAO. And the, in with the Drip Drops DAO, you have the they have their own token Drip token, which they you have to be a holder of Drip token to be able to vote in their in their DAO in their governance um, votes. Um, but you, and you can also use it as with utility on the platform itself. So you can use it to pay, participate in their token claims and so on and so forth. So um, Summon is a is a it's just the voting portion of the of that DAO's operations at the moment. Um, the other large project that's producing DAO tooling is um, uh, Clarity DAO. Um, so they're creating a DAO of DAOs almost. Um, Failing to copy that URL. And the, the, you know, there's, there is, I suppose, competition between Summon and Clarity. Both are really great platforms. I've used Summon first, um, just started looking at Clarity uh, recently as I met the team in um, Toulouse. Uh, hi, Barbara. Um, but yeah, this is the governance platform uh, for drip drops on the summon set of tools. So here you can see that they create a governance action, which is a decision they want to make around, um, in this case, um, they want to take the treasury of drip drops and put it into um, a proof of liquidity system, effectively where you um, you start to grow the value of your token, your project token, by providing liquidity on exchanges, so it's easier to swap in and out of, and then you're actually earning from the fees um, that that token is making. So it's a good way of sort of starting to create a, a full financial ecosystem around your organization. So drip drops are, are working towards that. 
and so they're putting it to a vote what sort of um uh what sort of release mechanism they're going to have for uh, the rewards of drip interesting so yeah you can come on here if you hold drip tokens then you can participate in the vote and um And uh, yeah, have a, have, have a snoop around any other of the tools that they're actually using. This looks like it's just, um, yeah, just this, just one governance action at the moment. Be a good spot for, it's always interesting to see people, projects, particularly mainstream, high profile, higher profile projects uh, like drip drops start to use community tools from around um, wider areas. And actually, so they do have a uh, multi-sync wallet. Is that up and running? No, that's for creating your own one. So this is this is actually for, yeah. The, this is, these tools underneath Create are for your own use, um, just on using the Summon platform, not, not tied specifically to Drip Drops project. Um, so in fact, off the home page of the Summon platform, uh, there are other projects listed here. Um, so here we've got the tokens and Hosky, ScatDAO, do the do your own research tool. ADAO is the the team that actually built out or the founders came out and built Summon from the ADAO's uh, chunk of work. ADAO produced a multi-sig wallet that we use in Opportunity DAO. And uh, I did. I thought I had created a um, community in here for Fluid Pool, but yeah, there we go, I did. So I, I never got it verified, I didn't complete it. But if we wanted to participate in, um, in DAO voting, then we could jump into Summon, I could uh, add you it all in as a, uh, participants in the vote. Um, and I think you can do things like if I issued an NFT T to each one of you that represented your participation in Fluid Pool, um, then you could then, uh, that will allow you to participate participate in the vote. And then whichever token I chose to actually control um, how much vote power you had could be decided on as well. So for example, I could say, if you hold gimbal tokens, and one of my fluid pool NFTs, then you can you can vote on decisions around the pool. And some of those decisions we might make as a pool would be, what could be, um, uh, how much um, ADA do we want to stake to the small extra small stake pool alliances rotating delegation, um, which I'll touch on a bit later in the call. Um, or it could be, uh, where do we want to send the next season of pool rewards that I promise to um, give to charitable um, or non-profit causes. Um, at the moment we're giving to uh, provide internet access for students in Ethiopia. If we wanted to choose another target for those funds and I could perhaps I put that to a, a DAO vote. And so it's a way of, of, even though we are, you know, unrelated individuals, we do have one, uh, Point of common interest, and that is, um, we all stake to fluid pool, and that's where we we perceive there is value. Um, so together, that group of people can can vote on things specifically in that area of interest. That doesn't prevent you um, going and operating and exercising your voting power in drip drops or in um, uh, any of the other uh, programs using and projects using these platforms. Uh, but it does give you, you know, a, a voice of personality in multiple multiple communities, and so this is where the future of governance really should go. I I feel instead of us sitting in our nations, um, getting told we have this bad choice and or this bad choice when it comes to making decisions as a nation, um, that should probably all just disappear and actually get fragmented out into um, much smaller decisions. Uh, more localized so that we can actually be deciding on things that impact us and those around us 
Um, when it does come to global decisions, then yes, we need large scale votes, but that's more like we have for, um, um, you know, like at Cardano, we're deciding to um, change the parameters on the blockchain um, if we want to reduce uh, the number of state pool operators that is the optimal number to get rewarded for supporting the infrastructure. That's something that the whole chain needs to decide on because it massively impacts the performance of the chain and um, the operators on it. Um, um, and that's, you know, I kind of see it as like a national vote or a global vote. That's the sort of thing we do need large scale decisions to be made, but most decisions are just about, um, and to engage people in, in decision-making in governance, you really need things that impact them um, and that they know their vote is going to make a difference ultimately. Because if you, you know, you're a, a minnow in the pool of uh, whales and sharks, uh, your vote ultimately doesn't account to much um, in, a, in, a, in a national scale and a global scale. But when it comes to uh, smaller things that direct you, um, they impact you directly, like uh, participation in fluid pool, that can be something you can actually make a difference on. And so your voice is it, like everyone who attends these calls, I really respect and rate highly as, you know, a sense in, in what decisions I should be offering to the public and, you know, what, uh, what your opinion, your opinions can make a difference into how uh, the fluid pool uh, operates and, and, and where we where we take it. So yeah, these this is really good to highlight. Thanks, Paul. Um, Summon's a great platform, and uh, I have, yeah, I've touched on it in the past, and that's how drip drops are using it. It's good, it's a good thing to see as well. Uh, one of the interesting thing of point is that Agora DAO is um, you know if you're going to make your own DAO, then it's based the ones that you can do on Summon, and incidentally, all the one also the ones you can do on on Clarity. They are Agora style DAOs. And so if you wanted to go into a deep dive on governance and DAO tools, then you can go and look at the um, Agora um, uh, white papers and they describe the sort of space, uh, the sort of rules and structures that an Agora DAO has. So lots of lots of blockchains, not just Cardano, use Agora as a as a good governance framework for their DAOs. Uh, I think it might be this one I was thinking of. Yeah, anyway, there's lots of references out there, but this one is worth yeah, perhaps having a read through if you if you are interested. So you know, DAOs of the future um, will you know if this utopia comes about as we're we're hoping, then DAOs can replace um, businesses. So instead of us um, of have, us having decisions siloed away in small boards and directors um, meetings, they can actually become um, uh, users can start to participate. Like we have shareholders participating in votes in um, public companies and private ones, um, we can have just users of apps um, voting in the directions that the applications of software that we use heads day to day. Um, and these are you know, things that will improve the experience both for the developers of the world, the builders, the companies, as well as the, util the users and the, re the retail um, guys that actually use these products and other corporations, businesses. So DAOs are a way of spreading that power to the edges, creating it as a more equal playing field for helping us make good decisions as humans. Cool. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right, let's jump into a few other bits of news. I mentioned it last week. Um, actually, no, I didn't mention this last week, but let's start on this. So uh, we are part of the Extra Small State Pool Alliance as Fluid Pool, and we are participants in the rotating delegation, which for anyone that doesn't know is a, a means of helping small pools get started with a decent chunk of stake for us for a few epochs. Um, this will improve their likelihood of being assigned a block to mint. And you know, once you've minted your first few blocks, that can really make a difference in attracting delegators and proving that you're running a good node. Yes, please, thank you. 
And so the um, the extra small stake or rotation uh, um, participants can, and it's, it's mostly just done by other stake pool operators at the moment, those within the state, extra small stake pool alliance. If you're a member of the extra small stake pool alliance, you can come in and participate um, as a recipient of that rotation, but also as a as a participant. Um, so you, you effectively take some of your ADA um, and pledge it to follow the rotation. And every four or six epochs, the rotation moves around um, a particular state pool um, and everybody delegates their ADA to that pool, which then boosts their state level and gives them a chance of minting a block. So at the moment, we are receiving the extra small state pool rotation again. And I, there is a clause within the rules of that rotation that if you've minted more than 50 blocks, you're no longer eligible to join the rotation. Um, and I, it was unclear to me whether it was a join rotation or continuing the rotation, but I assumed we'd be out of it. And I, I said, please take me out of the rotation because we've got minted over 50 blocks. However, uh, that wasn't picked up by the admins and the rotation actually started coming over to Fluid Pool um, and we were still in that list. Um, and so the first few, um, I popped up on and had a quick discussion with the the ex PO guys on their Discord server. And we effectively had just reached a, a, a rapid internal agreement that we won't uh, limit the, the pools in that rotation um, when they hit 50 blocks. So I can, I can say in there, and so we're receiving this extra delegation for the next uh, um, four epochs, which is 20 days. So uh, you can see we've got, I don't know how many new delegators to the pool, but all these are coming over from STGR pool. Um, so that's Stake Green pool, the, uh, a member of the Extra Stake Pool Alliance. He was a recipient of the, of the delegation before we, um, before us in this, in this cycle. And so if you're interested in uh, energy efficient, uh, environmentally uh, healthy state pool, then this is what his focus is, is a unique selling uh, or value proposition is that they are uh, running on green technology, carbon neutral, et cetera. So you can go and check out uh, state green pool. And I thank you for his rotation round to fluid pool now. Um, so we're going to have this stake, extra stake in the pool, which is totaling about um, 100,000, 100,000 ADA. So I think our our sort of raw figures in the pool at the moment are hovering between sort of 380,000 and 420,000 um, typically staked in the pool. Um, and we have about 140 delegators. Um, that's bumped up now with um, the extra small stake pool alliance all coming over to us which is why we're seeing a nice jump in the amount of stake and the number of delegators. So 167 now with 500,000 ADA state. Um, and that means that our, our likelihood of being assigned blocks um, per epoch um, has gone up 25%. Um, and we haven't emitted a block for a couple of epochs now. So I, I should think in the next, within the next four, we'll have one or two blocks minted, which is great. Um, Uh, we weren't assigned one for this epoch and I haven't done the tech check for next epoch yet, but uh, I'll, I'll go and check that out a bit later. Uh, so that's the extra safe light. Thank you guys. Um, next bit of news, and do interrupt me if you've got any questions, any points, this is workshop, so yeah, don't let me monologue unnecessarily. <laughs> so quick glance over at uh, formerly known as a starter. This is Lumino. Um, if you haven't picked up on the bits from last week's call, uh, there is the merge staking protocol starting soon, um, which is where if you are a holder of ADA and have participated in the AA token um, pre-sale, pre um, which is what we did using Opportunity DAO, then you can register with Lumino to earn LMN tokens, um, additional to the LMN tokens you'll be receiving as part of the pre-launch. So the the two things to note of importance are A starter is now Lumino, and the AA token that we had bought into is now being rebranded 
as Lumino, LMN. Um, so you'll be receiving LMN tokens, not AA, but they are one and the same thing. They're just a branding uh, change. The tokenomics have stayed the same um, and the uh, uh, launch price, et cetera, should, should be the same immaterial of you know, what the name of the token is. So if you do want to check out the tokenomics again, remind yourself of, of what they are, then there's this blog post from um, April that Lumino team did, um, giving you a breakdown of the distribution of the token um, and uh, who's holding it and how much of it, uh, which is a good thing to do if you're doing due diligence on a token. Um, if you are looking to get in or are actually already a participant. Uh, the call to action is to come to this Google form and fill it in. So if you haven't done this yet and you uh, are staked to Fluid Pool and have, or staked to any of the participating pools and have bought into AA or LMN, as it's now called, then do come into this form, uh, give your email address, say which pool you're participating with, Fluid Pool, Fluid Pool, and Alligators, and then um, that will make sure that you're on a list to receive um, the boosted LMN tokens uh, as part of their merge staking um, program. So put in your uh, receive address from your wallet, Eternal, your Oi, Lace, etc. cetera. Um, select Fluid Pool, if you are a stake Fluid Pool, these are the other partner pools. And actually several of them are extra small stake pool alliance members as well. So good friends of mine. Um, but choose the one you actually staked to with this wallet. So this wallet should match up with your your the pool that you select up here. Um, click next. Uh, this is if you want to nominate another pool um, to participate in, in the merge staking. I don't have anyone who's not in there that I would uh, think of to recommend. So I leave that blank. Um, and then it's on this final page. You can get a bit of boost if you are following Lumino on social media as well. So Twitter and Telegram groups. Um, drop your Twitter handle and your Telegram handle. Make sure you are subscribed by following these links. Um, and that will get you a little boost on your reward tokens as well. And the final stage is to say, um, if you want to receive some spam from them. <laughs> and uh, and uh, if you're an investor in the project, then yeah, sign up for their, their news feed. And if you've got any feedback or questions from them, you can drop them in there. So if you've got any questions about the token, why it's uh, been such a long delay, see if they've got any more insights on that, you can drop that question in there and the team will get back to you. Uh, Paul. Um, with our obviously investment in this token, realistically, Jonathan, how long, you know, do we get our returns for? Is it, you know, unlimited? Is it over a 12 month period? What is it? Yeah, so the conditions of the initial, what we were buying into was that it'd be a 12 month, um, 12 month was 18 month even. Uh, release cycle um, but that would start after the token generation event now two years ago we signed up for the program and they haven't had their token generation event yet so uh, when it does start whether that protracted times timeline will still uh, play out or not I imagine it will because um, um, one of the interesting things and again it sort of plays back into some bits of my thoughts around uh, meme coins as well, which I, I will touch on a bit later. Um, when you're looking at tokenomics on a project, um, as a as a holder of those tokens, what you want to see is a a wide distribution of those tokens in um, a, a no huge pooling of those tokens in any one holder's hands. So if you have um, a token um, for a project launch and fifty percent of the token are held by the founding team of which there are five members, and then 50% is, is distributed nicely between the community, then that would be a red flag as, a, as, a, um, as an investor. Because it means if you uh, participate, buy into that token, 
and then someone on that team of five uh, who hold maybe or who have rights perhaps to um, you know, twenty percent of the tokens, or you know, I, I can't do maths in my head. <laughs> How much of the tokens that would represent? Um, a significant chunk of those tokens. They could fall out with the project, leave the project, take the tokens with them, and sell sell them on the market. I and mean, if you sell you know, 20% supply, 15 or 10% of a supply of a token on the market um, at the market rate there and then, that will plummet the price um, because there will be suddenly a huge plethora of tokens available for sale again, and that means the price will drop. And so as, a, as an investor, you don't want those high volatile movements up and down on your token that you're holding because uh, you're, you're looking for, you know, as a holder, you're looking for long-term growth, maturity. If you're a trader, then... Um, you want consistency of movement and an understandable price action. You you want volatility if you're a trader typically, but um, you know you want to have an idea on where it's going to go. And if a, a, bl a black swan event like a founding member selling half the supply half the supply of tokens in one fell swoop, you, there's no way you can control which way you should be trading, and it'll and you know it'll just be a surprise to you. So you want a wide distribution of the token and lots of people involved holding a small amount of the tokens. Um, so with a starter, uh, Lumino, uh, when they do their token generation event, again, what we want to do is, is to see a um, the token spread out to lots of participants um, because that would mean that will create more stable price action because it's harder for lots of people to do the same thing at once. Um, and uh, we want it to have, uh, and when there is a, a large amount of tokens being given out to a few individuals, we want that to have a, a vesting schedule so a vesting schedule is when the holders of those chunks of tokens can only actually sell them on, put them onto the market in small amounts over a long period of time. And so the, the schedule for the release of the A starter tokens in the pre-launch to us as early investors um, is, is being drip fed to us in that manner. So it means that we, we're, we can end up being as large holders in the community. And so if we get all of them at once and we're fed up with the project because it took so long to do the token generation, we just dump them on the market and drop the price for everybody. Um, so actually what we want to see is uh, we've we've committed our funds, our ADA, a couple of years ago into this project. We want it to look to do well. So we're, we're sitting on the sidelines. We don't, it's out of our control at the moment. Um, but when it does uh, launch, we want that the release of those pools of tokens to be slow, steady, and so spread out over a year. Um, on a selfish note, if you're just an individual looking to get make maximum amount from it, then maybe you want to plug it all right at the start. Um, but that's not good for everybody. Um, and there's always someone quicker than you anyway. So likely it is you'd get hurt by the price sale, meaning that you then couldn't sell because the price has dropped. So slow, steady token releases, particularly for people who get into getting on pre-launches, is the name of the game. So I, I imagine that they'll carry on that same sort of 12, 18 month, I can't remember which it was, um, release cycle for the, for the tokens when the generation event does happen. Uh, yeah. Does that uh, help you out, Paul? Yep, thanks, Jonathan. Didn't that also happen when we all got like 10 tokens from, um, I can't even think of the name of the token that we got. Um, but I know there was a, a you know, 10 tokens dumped in everyone's wallet. The, the, about yeah. 18 months ago. Um, there was a few we've had. NTX was was a nice one, um, which was the artificial intelligence related to token. As a, as a political delegator, you got some NTX. Um, and that was just for free out of the blue, um, which is very nice. There's a few different ones we've had over the time. Um, in fact, Sometimes I have to go to the, my website to remind myself what we've been involved in. Uh, this is a fluid pool website, and uh, there are bonus tokens mentioned here. So it's Coinecta ones, um, Lumino, which is a starter. That's AA tokens. When that generation events happens, you can benefit from as a state pool as a fluid pool delegator. NTX was the AI coin I was just mentioning. And of course, we've had gimbal tokens. We've also had Mac tokens and um, uh, what was that game with the stinger? 
Oh dear, I forgot the name of the game. Bug, it was Bug something. Bug Wars? Yeah, yeah, what was it? Uh... Cyberbug, Cyberbug, that was it. Z-I-B-E-R, Cyberbug game. So we've got some Zyber tokens. Um, yeah, Mac from Machiavellic and uh, NTX from NuNet. Uh, so yeah, again, that's 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 a way of doing it. So Drip Drops as a platform helps you spread your tokens far and wide um, with a slow drip distribution of your tokens into lots of holders' hands. Um, and so what, that may be a good point to talk about um, meme coins. So it was talked about a little bit in uh, in Lucas call before this one. Um, uh, Jeff raised the question: What it what are what is the value in a meme coin? And I've always had the opinion they're just memes. Ignore them. Hopefully they'll go away. They're just a blight on the digital currency landscape. Um, but they're not going away. They hold huge amounts of value. And um, it's starting uh, to shift my thoughts on them uh, from just being garbage to actually being representative of something important in people's minds. Now, I believe that meme coins are a psychological thing again, but as markets are purely psychological, emotional, um, that doesn't, you know, you shouldn't discount them completely. Um, now, I'm never going to recommend going out and buying and holding uh, meme coins because there is, there's no underlying utility, fundamental um, usefulness within them. There is just... Uh, volume of of asset and again in terms of the way that we want our utility tokens to be distributed like lumino we want that to go slowly and wide um into the hands of the of the community uh we want you know that's really where meme coins are are thriving because they typically have um uh token distribution policies that are uh, in lots of holders because a meme is a viable thing. It's it's um, so the the origins of um, meme as a word I think came from Richard Dawkins, a uh, evolutionary thinker, uh, British scientist, and he uh, he said that memes are like uh, viruses, mind viruses. Um, so they get into people's heads and they spread and they get shared. Um, and, and, and so the internet memes are, are certainly that. They are uh, a thought, an idea that gets spread around everybody. But in the case of meme coins, it's all about uh, some stupid underlying internal joke and uh, number goes up if everybody buys this and holds it. So uh, crazy idea, but it's translated into billions of dollars worth of crypto uh, value in meme coins as opposed to uh, utilities, utility tokens. And, um, you know, we, we can't discount the behavior of billions of dollars of anything. Um, so when you look at, uh, for example, the meme coins on Cardano, we've got Hosky and we've got uh, Snack was a big one from this year. Um, and there are other ones. Like the first meme coin, I think, was Space Coins from uh, Kyle, one of the Drip Drops founders. Um, but if you look at uh, Zerberus, which is a, a project that does token analysis, they have a... Uh, well, so there's an interview here between Zerberus, the guy in the right... I can't remember his real name, apologies. Um, uh, Simon Peters and uh, Lofi, Lofi, who's an American um, guy who came up with Snack meme coin, which is the largest traded coin on Cardano, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so these two are, are talking about the value of meme coins, um, and they've got some good insights there as well. Um, but Zerberus as a platform um, does token analysis. So, they've, so if we have a look at the Zerberus platform, um, 
and you want to do some due diligence on a token before you buy into it, maybe, then Zerberus is somewhere that I recommend you go and have a look. And their app um, will rate, <clears throat> excuse me, their app will rate projects and tokens um, by order. And sitting at the top of their, their uh, valuation, according to their rules, is Snack, which is the meme coin. Um, the reason that it's sitting at the top is because it's got this um, large market cap, 209 million ADA are tied up in Snack token. Um, in, as a comparison, Singularity Net has got 565 million. Um, so that's a huge token on multiple, you know, on Ethereum and Cardano, as we were just talking about. Um, they're, you know, one of the largest sing um, artificial intelligence tokens out there. <clears throat> uh, we've got World Mobile, which is, you know, twice the size of AGIX again at 1.2 billion, but still that is, you know, only six times larger than Snack uh, by market cap. <clears throat> so there's a show, huge amount of value tied up in um, in snack, snack token. Also in terms of uh, trading volume, if you look at the amount of transactions and the volume that's happening on a day-to-day -day basis, Snack is right at the top there. 2.3 uh, million ADA is traded in the last 24 hours in Snack tokens. So the traders are using Snack more than any other token in, in terms of their day trading efforts um, on Cardano. Um, and this, you know, this and other metrics combines to make a triple A rating for the SNAP token. So in terms of Zerberus' own rules about tokens that it's, that it's uh, safer to hold than risky, more safe than risky, um, then SNAP is right up there. And it's a meme coin, <laughs> um, which is, you know, then makes me think, you know, initially, what on earth is a Zerberus score really doing? And um, why, why should it be listened to at all? but it's, it's specifically for those facts. If you've got a token that is uh, got a high amount of value stored within it, so 200 million ADA in this case, and it is traded heavily, um, and it is also in the hands of lots and lots of people, uh, so they don't have that directly on this first page, but if we dip through into some more tokens for the, more metrics for the token, um, there is a distribution number. So the number of uh, of wallets holding. Uh, so we've got 21 whales, 270 sharks, 1,600 dolphins, 6,200 fish, and 13,000, 14,000 shrimp wallets. Um, and so, you know, tot up those numbers, and that's a significant number of people holding the token, which means it's spread far and wide. And is unlikely to, you know, have one whale impacting the the price drastically with a big sell off. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the types of wallets that are holding a token as well is is very distributed. So, uh, you know, we do have whales, but we also have lots of small wallets. Um, we do have traders as well. We do have holders. Um, and so all the behavior around the people who are holding this token means that they are very diverse sets, which means that this mark, this mind virus, this meme has managed to get itself into the awareness of lots of lots of investors, lots of people holding um, tokens in the Cardano ecosystem. And therefore, it is unlikely to have um, a hugely risky price movement, um, big sell offs, etc. And, you know, is likely to see us through this bull cycle. And if, if there's anything we can learn from meme coins is that uh, there's a huge amount of money to be made if you're in it just for speculation in meme coins. Um, and, you know, this is, this is it's awkward for me. It doesn't sit well with my ideal, my ideals that uh, utility, you know, actual usefulness, fundamental, um, Usability should be the, the core basis of evaluation of a token. But this is looking at, this is a different type of score. This is just purely looking at the risks associated with getting involved with it. And in this interview, one of the really interesting things that came out was that actually there's often more risk in holding a utility 
token, so a coin that has usefulness, um, because you've got that holder risk in terms of the number of people holding it, big holders might sell off, um, as well as the risk of the project collapsing because there's some fundamental flaw found in the in the utility they're providing. So like a min swaps token that um, powers their decentralized exchange. If min swap for some reason has a, a hack or a vulnerability discovered, then the utility, the value in that token will drop um, um, because people's perception, confidence in it will uh, drop off in correlation with the success of the, uh, or the reputation of the project. So if there is a hack, then people will start selling the min, min token, uh, which is one of the risk factors that Zerberus looks at. Then also you've got you know, how how much are the, are the big holders holding? Um, and if they want to sell off, how quickly can they do it? And those risks both apply to a, a utility token like MinSwap, but only one of those risks applies to a meme coin because memes don't have any utility to, to, to worry about. <laughs> There's not gonna be a meme, uh, a snack hack because it's just a native token on Cardano. It's no, it's offering no utility. Uh, and, and that to me was a, like another eye. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's a fair point. <laughs> uh, disturbing but true. So there is, uh, I won't look down on meme coin holders so much anymore. Uh, I still don't like to participate in any volume, but uh, you know, if you're introducing someone to the space who just wants to, uh, you know, you just want to give them a taste of the crazy price action that is within crypto. Uh, because we're early to the space, we don't have the volume of the traditional finance industry. Then yeah, maybe they'll be more interested in in uh, meme coin because that's where all the news and media talks about than they would be in um, world mobile token, which is far more sensible and, and actually has real use case um, or empower uh, fractionalized real estate. It's, n it's not such a, a grabby title as Snack. Nah. <laughs> so, you know, play to your audience. Um, and it might have some uh, some good marketing um, uh, value, if nothing else. Cool. So, yeah. And, yeah, and do use, make use of Zerberus um, as one of the, one of the sort of checkpoints to put into your due diligence on any project and token. Um, on Cardano, their metric, as well as metrics out of ScatDAO's Do Your Own Research tool, um, they are both worth looking at. Good. Uh, any questions on any of that? Or I'll be frankly on. <clears throat> so, mm. I touched on Yam for last week. Yam4 is a lending platform that's um, being built out on Cardano. Uh, they have a public test net available. So if you want to participate, uh, I don't think it's incentivized, but um, if you like playing with test money and um, playing with apps and getting yourself familiar with using decentralized applications without any risk, because you're working not on the main net, but on the test net, this is a really good opportunity to get involved in some um, uh a project to try things out so you can you can it'll walk you through um <clears throat> getting some free uh, test ada and some test cblp cblp is their token and test usd which is a, a representative of a, of a stable coin and so um those assets will be sent into your pre-production wallet which is a which operates on the test net of cardano and then you can connect your pre-prod wallet to their test net app um, to start playing with free money. Um, that money will never have any value, but it's fun to uh, to learn with uh, free money than it is to play to learn with fake with <laughs> more fun to learn with fake money than it is to work, learn with real money. Because if you're making any mistakes with real money, it hurts your pocket. Whereas with fake money, it doesn't. So go and play uh, in this. Playground. They're at themselves. I I love the UI. It's probably a chalk and cheese thing, but I think the user interface is really, really strong. Um, and you can go and take out virtual loans um, and and their uh, uh, investigate their 
unique value propositions for their loans compared to the other lending platforms like Fluid Tokens and LendFi, Liquid Finance. Um, but yeah, their their test nets good, their apps good. Um, it is they are responding rapidly to uh, feedback. You can give them in the Discord. Um, so if you yeah if you like playing with it, I know Dinesh, you've had to play with uh, some other um, pre prod wallets and things like that. So if you want to get another use use out of it, you can play with the Yam Four um, ecosystem as well. So perhaps as a quick run through on that, once you are all all hooked up, you can come to um, this URL, which is their test decentralized application. I've got a guide on how to make use of it, what things to look out for while you're testing. Um, that's where you go and grab your test net ADA. Uh, there is links to the white paper and to their social medias. Um, if you go to your eternal wallet, once you've got prepod wallet set up, bottom right of the wallet, you can switch over to the pre-production network. So that's not using Cardano mainnet anymore. It's now using the testnet, which again is a, is a copy of the Cardano blockchain. Um, and on here, you have stateful operators again, but they are operating their nodes at a cost, not earning anything from operating on the testnet. Um, and so Silabyte is the pool that I delegate to on testnet at the moment. Um, he's a stateful operator that sent me 80 ADA when I just started out as a stateful operator. So I was very grateful to him um, and paying it forward by sticking to his testnet pool. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got my prepod wallet set up in Eternal. I've got my DAP connect switched on. It's a green plug icon, which means then I can go uh, into the YAM4 app and connect my wallet here. So yeah, I'm already connected. And and then I can go through and play, play with that as much as I want, participate with my um, my holdings. Uh, if you interact with their Discord server, you can also leave your uh, pre-prod receive address, and they will send you some testnet CBLP and some testnet USD as well. Uh, and then you can come and interact with the app. Uh, so this this app effectively lets you um, put up some collateral. So if you're holding, say, 10,000 ADA and you want to get more out of it than um, just the staking rewards, you can come put it up as collateral against the loan. And so, you know, in the future, I can imagine this being for, uh, you know, replacing mortgages. Uh, if, you're, if you're holding, say, 100,000 ADA today and you're willing to hold that hold on to that for the next um four six years i'll see you through one cycle and into the next one ball cycle into the next um then you know that that hundred thousand ada could easily turn into five hundred thousand pounds um or dollars and so that will be enough value in ada to warrant you using that ada as collateral in a significant real world loan so the yam platform is aiming to be that platform where you could go, instead of going to your mortgage broker, to one of the mainstream uh, banks or, or mortgage companies, you could actually just come to the blockchain, get your 100,000 ADA, put it up as collateral against the loan for $500,000. Um, and it, in you'll receive into your wallet, you'll, you'll hand your 100,000 ADA over into the yam app, which is a smart contract system, and you'll receive back from that app um, 500,000 stablecoin, US dollars. You can then take those US dollars um, and your loan can run uh, for as long as you want it to. So typically when you take out a mortgage, it could run for, it might have a fixed term period of five years um, and the pet has a penalty if you leave it before that five years or it could be one year, two year. But your, your loan duration is typically you know, 15, 20, 25 years. Um, and so that's the idea with Yam4. You'll take out a long-term loan um, against using your ADA as collateral. Uh, and once you've got stable coins worth 500,000, you can then go and buy a house in the real world. You can swap your stable coins through a centralized exchange or, or a DEX for cash in the bank and buy a house outright with your ADA holdings. Um, 
without having lost your ADA holdings because you, you are using your ADA as collateral in a loan. Um, and it means that you have to make sure that the, the loan payments are made, just like your mortgage payments were made. But as you're doing that in the real world at the moment, the traditional finance world at the moment, you could instead be doing that in the digital finance world. Um, and uh, because the, the asset value is accumulating at such a different pace to the, the dollar um, assets, then it's very realistic to imagine that um, you know, in the next couple of years or six years, we could see um, mortgage, you know, if you're an investor at this stage, you can see mortgage style money um, being uh, held in digital currencies uh, in that time. Um, and we'd still probably need to interact with the traditional mortgage market um, and, you know, state units and all that sort of stuff. So why not use your ADA, your holdings, crypto holdings as collateral for a, you know, a real world purchase and this platform you would let you do that. So you can try and come and play with it, uh, see how much how much dollars you want to borrow against your collateral. Um, there's a little bug there. You need to type before it'll let you borrow. Yeah, you should report that. So that's, that's the sort of thing you get on the testnet app. Um, so I just, when I came to this page, I clicked, just clicked maximum. So it grabbed the figure out of my wallet but I can't actually can't actually borrow because I haven't typed into that box yet. And that's a web developer developer bug. As soon as I type that number in, then I can actually borrow. Um, and so you might report that as part of your service, you know, um, as a tester. Um, you report that on the Discord server and they'll get a bug fix done. Um, but yeah, you're still playing with the app itself yeah. and getting an idea of how it might work on mainnet. And so there we go, I'll, I'll put up 6.7 thousand ADA, I'm putting up 1.2 thousand CBL tokens, CBLP tokens, and I'm gonna receive $5,000 dollar stable in stable coins from this loan. Um, in fact, I can probably go through and sign that now. Ending passphrase. Um, you can see the signing window for eternal wallet. Again, oh god, my numbers obscured, but you can see I'll be sending out test ADA and test you and um, test CBLP. That's one more token, which will be the uh, test. Uh, what is that other token? So I'm sending out test ADA and test CDLP. That shouldn't be another token at all, should it? Or maybe that's just part of the UTXO management in my wallet. I might have another token in the UTXO that needs to come back to me and change. Probably that. Um, and then, yeah, there'll be a certain amount of TUSD sent back to my wallet, 5,000 is what I'm expecting. So again, these are the sort of things you can look out for when you're testing and really start to grow your knowledge and see if what you're interpreting from these signing screens is actually translating to uh, here's my signing password. See if that's actually translating to real world thing. So uh, it's now waiting for confirmation for 20 seconds for the block to get propagated. And back in the wallet, switch this off, see my values go. So I've got 50,000 in that wallet. I come to the, to the transactions tab. I can see this is a transaction I've just signed. And um, I should get back 5,000 test USD and lose 1.2 thousand CBLP for my wallet. Uh, and there we go. That's just happened now. So in my wallet, in the account summary, we can see the balance has dropped to 43,000 ADA from 50,000, which it was before. I can see under my token list, that I now should have 
5,000 test US dollars. So that would be the um, stable coin that your loan will be paid out in. Um, and you could then take, you know, send that to uh, your, your centralized exchange, and then send it that and swap it for uh, real local currency, pounds in my case, and send that those pounds to my bank. Um, you can't do that from test now, obviously. But uh, when it does hit mainnet, that's the sort of things you'd be able to do. And, and there I can see my testnet YAM4 tokens as part of the loan itself. And so that's you interacting with a with a, a, a DAP with a, with no real assets at risk because it's not your it's not mainnet assets. And there's a confirmation the transaction's completed and the app can see it as well. Um, and so here now I've got this position tab opened up. And the position I can see the terms of the of the loan that I've taken out and um what's so a quick summary. I borrowed five thousand dollars worth. I've used six thousand ADA as collateral and I paid it a fee in CBLP tokens. And this is that fee of CBLP, I think is 19% of the loan value as well. So you, there's a premium for getting involved in a loan in the AM4 system. And um, you're paying nearly you know 19% as a as a pure fee. It's going straight into the AM4 ecosystem and not coming back to you at all. Um, plus then you're making interest payments. But the the idea of the platform is that your interest payments will actually uh you can ne you're never at a risk of having your collateral um taken from you so your loan can never be liquidated um because you pay 20 percent into um the loan at the beginning um and your interest on your capital that you borrowed is going up all the time so the loan is getting big um you know, the interest if you're not making payments will, will grow in size but you don't actually have to pay the pay it back um uh because you've got this collateral sitting there and the idea is that if you want to get your collateral back then you do have to repay the loan and so that balance might have gone up in the meantime to cover your interest payments uh, to cover the interest that's been added on if you have not been making your interest payments um and if you want to get your collateral back then you need to pay the full balance of the loan to then get your 6.7k ADA out again and you know, depending on market conditions, um, fiat versus crypto, um, that that price difference is that you're likely to want to get your collateral back out again. So you are going to redeem, you know, make payments against your loan and redeem it. Um, but the, you're not risking your, your your position if you can't pay it for a certain period of time because your loan cannot be liquidated um, until you actually close it. So if you come back and say, well, I'm not going to repay this 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 loan then that ADA that you've given in as collateral is sitting in the treasury of YAM4 um, earning additional ADA. So all the ADA that people have put in to the loan, all the CBLP that they're paying as a 20% fee on the loan, all that is accruing value. And that all that liquidity, all that value that's being created within the loan system is staying in the platform to create the stability and the volume for um, long-term running of, of the system. And there's very little drawn off that goes back to the original founding team because this is a smart contract system. All the money is staying within it and the ecosystem is growing. Um, and the only value extraction is really in the, the YAM4 token, the CBLP, um, which the, the team holding a certain you know, significant chunk of as the developers. Um, and then you as an investor will hold some as well so you can participate in the loan. Um, and then also the treasury will be growing its holding of CBLP as well because it's, it's drawn that 20% fee, that 90% fee of setting up the loan in the first place. So a really interesting value proposition for large scale borrowing, long-term borrowing on Cardano. Um, and this is a testnet phase. Um, so you can apply, come and play with it without, without risking any assets. They've also got some other um, uh, features in here, which I haven't started to play with yet, like the market just for swapping in and out of um, uh, CBLP and uh, and ADA, uh, and then there's a link through to their um, tokenomics for the CBL token itself, CBLP token. So the testnet is is um, 
got a couple of functions really. One, it's actually letting people test the application. The team are getting some free um, real world testing um, from real users in various different environments. Um, which is great feedback for any developer to know that their app's working across multiple platforms. Um, and then they're also exposing people to the CBLP token itself, which has already gone through a token generation event on mainnet. And I've talked about it in the past. If you want to have a look at um, CBLP, then it is a, a very good uh, token for uh, yield farming, 76% return yield farming on CBLP on mainnet. Um, <clears throat> And again, this is a you know this is going back to a conversation about utility tokens versus meme tokens. Um, this is a this is a utility token. Um, so if you're a holding of the holder of the CBLP, then you're you're confident in the future of this as a platform being successful. Um, you like the product, you like what it's offering to the world, um, and so you think the token value will go up as more more people come to use the platform, and that's what you're basing your valuation of this project on. And that's a, a more fundamental, reliable metric for me, in my investment um, behaviors, than uh, a meme coin is. Um, but I do take that point that there's there's two different types of risk within that decision making. The team could fail, the project could have a bug, the uh, token could go down as a result. And as where the meme coin, there's no tech to go down. It's just the the value of the project that could go go down. Interesting. So. You'll have a, have a look at the that um that yam for this medium post details or things you need to get involved um and that's worth having a play uh another bit of news on Cardano is that usdm our stable coin our fiat backed stable coin um it's the only one really of any um value uh currently it seems has now recently doubled its um its its amount of um, liquidity. So we've gone from two hundred thirty four thousand ADA just this month to uh, last few days we've gone up to five hundred thirty thousand. So we are starting to get a um, a decent amount of market caps tied up in the USDM stablecoin. We do need it a lot higher to to really be uh, maintaining its peg, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but um, we're not maintaining this peg because that's done by the fact one dollar is worth one USDM. It can always be redeemed for it. Um, but we do need to, the volume to go up for it to start being used widely across multiple uh, utilities, applications, etc. Um, but yeah, great to see great to see that value picking up over time. And they only launched like last month, so uh, yeah, that's good. Good capital accrual. Um, on a technical note, uh, IOG, the developers, the builders of Cardano, the the brainstorm of uh, the greatest minds who've worked on this, um, have been working on uh, Ouroboros, which is a consensus protocol that Cardano uses, Cardano invented. Um, and so there is a particular portion of when you're spinning up an Ouroboros-based blockchain um, where it is vulnerable or a greater risk than any other point in its history. Um, so when you're starting up a chain, that's when it's most prone to having um, back actors come in and buy a whole load of the token and or, or mint a whole load of blocks and actually force the chain into behaving how they want it to rather than maybe your initial, as a creator of the chain, maybe your intention is. Um, and so that period in time has been has got as having a design update from IOG. Um, now, this isn't to say that the existing protocol has any kind of vulnerabilities. Like for example, in Cardano, we're well past the Genesis period, um, so there's no zero risk for us as a as an ecosystem. But uh, lots of other chains are using or are looking to use Ouroboros, either are using or are looking to use Ouroboros as their consensus protocol within their blockchain. And so IOG continue to work and develop and grow it, improve on it. And so the genesis period of the blockchain, when it's just being started out, um, they're, they're highlighted and recognized a few types of really technical attacks that could be made against the chain at that point in time. And so they've just 
creating new um, cryptographic mechanisms for securing the chain at that point um, and putting in some checks and balances to prevent co-opting or coercion of the chain in that in those early stages. Very technical paper, a very technical blog. Um, but if you are technically minded, then you can plow through this to your heart's content and revel in the uh, the glory of the massive brains <laughs> on display who are developing the blockchain that we're involved in. Um, so yeah, that's a good post to have a look at if you're tech minded. Uh, so um, on sort of macro crypto things, we've had a really exciting couple of days. Um, there was a bill being passed and being presented to the House of Representatives in the States that was to do with classification of digital assets. And um, the, the US governance structures have been um, very anti-crypto up until this year, really. Um, and so they've, they've tried to hammer them, tried to squash it. And um, they're really getting to a critical point now where a lot of people are aware of the value tied up in decentralized finance for so it actually to become a contender um, um, against the traditional finance sector. And so uh, bills are starting to be raised in the House of Representatives and in the Senate in the States um, to control the regulatory bodies around um, cryptocurrencies. And so typically we've seen the SEC, which is um, the Securities Commission in the States, uh, try and classify all cryptocurrencies, all DeFi, as uh, securities, in which case they come under really heavy regulation. Uh, so they're very hard for normal uh, everyday citizens to get and participate in. Um, um, and so this bill was one that proposed that was pro-crypto and uh, the expectation was that it would have um, a bad run in the House of Representatives. But in fact, we came out uh, winning it in that, in that House with 279 votes for the bill to be passed, 136 against. It still has to go on to the Senate um, to get the next level of ratification, but um, a really positive step forward, basically telling them, the SEC um, that they're doing a bad job and that DeFi has got value in it, and it's it should be classed as a uh, commodity and not as a security, which comes under far looser regulations. It's far more free to to act in them, and will let much, many more investors on board. Um, so that's great news. Well, one bit of great news out of the states, and we all, we do always look to the states for our finance news because that's the the largest player. That's the reserve currency, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the next great bit of news that came out of the macro um, scheme of things, it's not what I wanted to go to, is, um, and in fact, actually, that, a bit more on that. So the this bill that was, was being passed, um, Joe Biden, president of the free world, <laughs> he uh, uh, had threatened or it was rumoured or purported that he may veto that bill so he had the chance to stop it even getting into the house for a debate um for a vote um he didn't execute his veto power as president which is great um because basically he was he was losing in, in terms of popularity because the the crypto uh there was a whole load of people threatening to vote in the next general election based on how based on the voting records of the representatives and when it came to crypto bills. And so Biden was too scared to execute his veto powers over this bill, and it went through to the House and got a positive response. Um, uh, <clears throat> second great bit of news out of the House of Representatives that there's a bill um, gone through uh, seeking to ban um, um, uh, the Federal Reserve, which basically controls the money supply of the dollar supply in the world um, and is a very centralized, very, very, very powerful um, group of individuals who effectively are the puppet masters of, of uh, the economies around the world. Um, and there's a bill now gone through the House of Representatives banning the Federal Reserve from creating and issuing their own central bank digital currency. 
um, which is a, a huge, huge step forward in terms of ensuring we've got a free and fair financial system in the future. Um, and uh, again, this has to go to the Senate, where there is more power probably being coerced by the Fed, but um, great to have an awareness that we've got 216 for and 192 um, against that bill going through. So a good a good uh, representation in the House, certainly, that people, the representatives there, do know that their, their communities are pro-crypto and not against crypto. Uh, so great bit of macro news too. Not directly related to Cardano, but um, these things do affect us. And then finally, as we touched on earlier as well, the SEC um, has approved all the spot Ethereum ETFs. So just like last month we had the, or a couple of months ago, we had the Bitcoin ETFs approved, which means that pension funds um, can start buying Bitcoin on uh, their brokerage um, accounts. Now the same thing can be said for Ethereum. People uh, in regulated uh, financial services can start yeah, promoting Bitcoin and Ethereum to their investors uh, without, you know, getting slammed for it by their regulators. And pensions could buy both the Bitcoin and Ethereum now to put as, as digital assets, as investable assets in their, their pension funds, which is really exciting because a, a whole load of the money in the world is tied up in these big um, investment bodies. And uh, Ethereum was under significant threat to be classified as a security. Um, and now really that's um, you know, a much harder thing to try and convince the world of. The SEC has got a, a real uphill struggle to try and classify Ethereum as anything other than a, a quantity from now on. And if Ethereum is a quantity, then Cardano is a quantity. That's what it boils down to. So um, great news for Cardano, great news for DeFi as a whole um, to have Bitcoin and Ethereum now ratified as um, as regulated invest re investable regulated um, products on the on the exchanges. Uh, actually, that might have been a bit of news. Yeah, in fact, that was my last bit of news. So. There, ending on a real high. <laughs> uh, anybody got any thoughts on any of that we've touched on today? Quite a lot again. Um, mean coins and macro factors in the landscape. Anybody, any questions about real world dApps out there like yam uh, uh We've got maybe another five, 10 minutes if anybody does have a question. Uh, if not, and you've all heard me talk for too long, we can probably wrap up there. Dinesh. No, I'm, I'm all done. All's all say it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Just the last uh, personal point of view. I think there's been a massive uh, momentum in the um, recognition of cryptos this week, isn't it? In from, from the US regulators. From what was at the start of the week, up to the start of the week, to to change the whole mood and the momentum, it's a hundred and eighty degrees swing, um, which which implies there's, there's there's there was a lot going on behind the scenes, and um, there's a really good prospect for cryptos now establishing themselves in the in the US as the next big wave of new technology capability coming through. That, that's just the personal observations. Yeah, no, I I hundred percent agree with you. It's uh, I mean, it was uh, it was something that I've always thought would happen that the tides would turn, mm -hmm. but you've still got those niggling doubts <laughs> at the back of your mind <laughs> that have been so anti, yeah. uh, um, and they seem to be absolutely lawless in terms of they don't conform to their own rules and regulations. There there is no. Um, you know, success on the part of the large exchanges in in getting ratified as as you know real businesses even um and, and constantly getting threatened with lawsuits from 
the SEC with no real reasons as to uh, warnings beforehand. Um, and now that all seems to be turning around. The SEC has been repeatedly been told off by judges um, in the states uh, for bad behaviour, mm-hmm. and and now the you know the government, the House of Representatives are voting against um, SEC's desires in uh, in their votes. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's a, a real shift. It feels like we're almost hitting critical mass in terms of yeah. uh, adoption and awareness. Um, yeah, I, th- I think it, it's a case of having uh, confidence in in that it's being established, as opposed to uncertainty. Um, ne- which ones? Which is going to be the next projects that's going to get the world's notice and um, court case? So I think I think the next big step is going to be XRP resolution, final resolution. And if mm-hmm. that's if that's favorable or minimal uh, impact on how much they get. Uh, find, then I think that'd be like another big step that'll start to turn the corner for uh, for um, crypto projects. Or, yeah, or don't forget, businesses. Don't forget this is a this is a global network we're talking about. It's not just isolated to the to the Americans. If they're not friendly and welcoming, you can do your business elsewhere in other countries. So. Yeah, I think they've they've seen the writing on the wall, and it's election year. That's true. Yeah, true. Yeah, and that's yeah. Yeah, that's where the sort of critical mass, you know, the the voting electorate um, are, re- are aware of crypto. They want to use crypto, and they're now forcing the hands of the people who represent them. So those uh, those those politicians are, you know. Ultimately, they're responsible for executing the will of the people, um, and they will and be. I, if they don't. And I want control of my money. I don't want someone in the government controlling what what's mine, and yeah. that's that's a big factor here in New Zealand. That I think, um, yeah, a lot people, more people are well aware of what Labour was like, um, and they want absolutely not a bar of it. <laughs> I think you're you're dead right, and the you know the states is uh, you know in wor- in a worse shape in terms of its monetary policies and financial controls than most other nations. I'd say the the way that the current reserve um, currency was started, I mean it was just rich boys getting together and designing how for the next hundred years they'll be able to maintain their wealth. <laughs> and that's what, you know, that's they've been extremely successful at it. But this is the first, you know, and it and that that seismic shift was started with Bitcoin. When mm. Nakamoto, um, uh, as an individual or as a group of, you know, great minds at the start of Bitcoin, when they suffered through the collapse of the financial markets in 2008, um, especially specifically around um, the housing market, and uh, that collapse triggered, we need to control our own money. We're, it's in the hands of criminals at the moment, and <laughs> let's do something about it. And so the beauty of Bitcoin is that it is a free, permissionless system where the value within it is created entirely by those who buy into that system. And it's not coercible, it's not manipulatable, it is... Um, decentralized and distributed and the money supply is fixed there will never be more than those 21 billion and uh, and so we can we can safely know that the value of the money of the bitcoin in our pockets is not going to be printed away from us at the next crisis which is what happened with all nation state currencies um over the pandemic um and you know all all likelihood is that history will repeat itself. There will be there'll be another crash. There'll be another pandemic. There'll be another you know disaster. Another black swan event, and yep. and the same thing will happen unless we switch away from the system we're using currently. The money mm-hmm. flows upwards all the time. You know it's the it's the and it's not even just the politicians, but it is the bank the banking industry behind it as well. They are just as greedy as the politicians seem to be. The politicians, you know, once they get to a certain point, don't seem interested in the populace, in the in the people they represent, so much as the, the pockets they're, they're going to retire with. And um, 
it just uh, it, it just seems like that there's been a whole culture that was created with, the, with this fiat system that was in place with central bankers mm -hmm. and uh, and then the culture just grew stronger and stronger and then they they became very comfortable now now it's a shock to them uh, to their own culture to go actually they're going to lose the controls they they used to have now i think this is like a turning point from here on yeah and i can see i can see um all of the ETFs are now going to follow. So there'll be Cardano ETF coming along in the future. At some point in time, there'll be XRP ETF, there'll be Solana ETF, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I can see that the whole new wave starting, uh, but in the short term, I think we might get a little dumb because one of the things I'm thinking is the GBTC, they've, they've already established uh, all these little um, ETFs in the past on the books. And with some discounts, so uh, those who's, who's bought into the uh, GBTC's uh, ETF for Ethereum, they got loads of discounts. So I think once the ETF is start starts trading, there'll be a big sell off because of the amount of profits they've already made. So there are profits they're already in because of the discounts. Yeah, yeah, and you know it's the same after the Bitcoin. There was a bit of a dip, but obviously the same after. Ethereum. I think so. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> <We've>, <laughs> Longer term, <laughs> yeah, our holdings have been worthless at the start, of the, <laughs> the start of the year, and and now they're worth five times what they were. You know, <laughs> so um, <laughs> up from here, and you know, we're we're in it for the, we're, we're long term players already. So those yeah. dips don't, don't really concern. Yeah. I um, do. I do like this idea of, of um, what you mentioned before. The you can use your holdings now. As a collateral, to you can use them as collateral. So don't have to sell it all together. You can use it as collateral to turn into something else and still get assets back in the in the future. So I think I'm gonna look into more into this this concept of uh, using the holdings as collateral for something else. So that's like a like a good incentive to look into. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It's an exciting future. I'd love, I love the next house I buy to be from, uh, yeah, be from currencies rather than from a, <laughs> <laughs> rather than from a, uh, you know, a bank or a mortgage company. Yeah, I just, just don't understand the risk. I think these uh, little test nets would be useful to um, to gauge what the risks, potential risks, may be. Yeah. And and just see how the mechanics work. Yeah. Um, uh, so Barbara, you, you, you uh, questioned earlier. Snack is that the spelling of the meme coin? That's right. Yeah, it was that S N E S N E K one. Um, um, yeah, that's worth. That's a, a crazy meme coin on Cardano. Uh, also, I just dropped in a link to the Zoom chat, uh, and maybe it's worth just a quick screen share. If you are interested in uh, something you can share with, as you're out evangelizing about decentralized finance to the world, and you want to wake them up to where, uh, how we got to the place we're in now. And in fact, if they're not aware of what's going on around them, you know, the financial system that we're in, this is a great 30 minute um, animated uh, expose on, um, the the financial system at its origins particularly um around right the us but of course you know britain has a legacy in this whole mix up as well so uh this is a you know a really good spend of 30 minutes and something you know, watch it watch it yourself if you haven't seen it before and then uh, it could be something you want to share with others because it really does explain it's a bit eye-opening in terms of how bad our financial system is, what its origins were, and how Bitcoin and crypto are really coming in to save, to, to shake that whole thing up and fix the problems at source. Um, and it's entertaining. So that's why I suggest it's something good to spend, good to share. And there are other videos like that in the Ideas to Spread channel on Discord. If you haven't looked, browsed through the, the ones on there, then that's uh, that's worth a little scan back over the last few messages. 
some good content in there. Good. Well, uh, um, there was one other thing actually I did not put into my notes, but if you if you're not registered for voting in Project Catalyst, it's worth getting that done now. You've got another um, uh, a week or so, I think it is, before registration is is closed for voting. Oh, or maybe it's a bit longer. Might be a bit longer. Um, yeah, we've the proposals are all in. Um, I've got one in there this time round. Um, and if you want to vote and receive the rewards for voting, then make sure you get the voting app onto your mobile device and follow the instructions in here to uh, register. You need to get the mobile device and connect your wallet and do some QR code scanning. It's not too difficult, but uh, yeah, this whole problem will go away soon, but not quite yet. Um, so do do that. And the only requirement is that you have 500 of it, 500 data in, in the wallet, in your voting wallet. Good. Well, we hit the top of the hour, so I think we'll close there and we can go and get on with our, our lives. Uh, should be on again next week. Um, and if you do have any topics you want me to cover in particular, then drop it into the uh, Discord server and I'll pick it up. Um, and yeah, look forward to catching up with you on Tuesday, Barbara. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm okay to do it a bit earlier. Um, if that suits you. So I think at 5.30 your time, that look good. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. Okay, we'll do that. I'll start shift over the calendar appointments. Awesome. Thanks for joining, everyone. Have a good week. Thank you. Uh, take care now. Thanks, Jonathan. All right. Have a nice Bye. weekend, everyone. All right. Peace.